Can, can we get the lights, please? The Bible is the word of God and all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The thesis for this uh, morning is taken from Acts 20, 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The ministry, because we've been talking about the Levites, and they had a ministry that was given to them to look over the church. And that's the same thing. This is found in, in, in the book of uh, Acts, which Paul is talking about. We get the same thing, that ministry, to attend as a servant. That was considered a bond servant in the Old Testament. And it says, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to, to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Take heed, pay attention to be cautious about, apply oneself to, beware, be given to, have regard to the flock, to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. Just like they were made overseers in the Old Testament, Levites were made overseers. So here in the New Testament, the Levites there I'm using as us, the Christians, the workers, those are overseers. And that word overseers is uh, composed of two words. It's at over, which means um, uh, superimposition as relation of, uh, is related to uh, distribution. And in Sears is uh, to look diligently. It says to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. And so in that context, the next verse is this. Verse 29 says, for I know that this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter into among you, not sparing the flock. And that word wolves is, is lucus, um, and it comes from the word uh, close to luke, which means light or white. Light is because some of these workers, and Paul was speaking there in the same context, he says. Workers are coming, speaking perverse things, distorting the truth. And they come in as light, angels of light or white. That word is close to white, like Laban, which is the color of leprosy, sin. So he says they come in as um, ministers of the truth. But Paul was, this is towards the end of his ministry. Paul was saying this was uh, towards the end of his third missionary journey he was speaking to the elders of Ephesus and the elders of uh, Melitas he was saying be careful watch over the God over the flock of God because I know that this is going to happen there's going to be false teachers coming and um, so this is the context so that's the same thing that we get so the thesis is this um, watch over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. And we go to verse 26 in Numbers 8 now. This is where we left off last week. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge, and shall, know, and shall do no service, thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. So remember, once you turn 50, you were done with your service but you would still continue to minister. It's, it's now that your ministering would be looked at as worshiping. And that's what happens to us after a certain time. Um, the ministry is not hard. It's, it's a joy. It's like, that's, that's the way I, the only way I can explain it is how I feel about it. I put so many hours into this lesson, but to me it's not work. I wanna do it. I mean, it's in me, it's burning in me because I mean, 
In order for me to teach you, I get taught. I get taught a lot of things when I prepare a lesson. So it becomes a worship, but it's still, the Lord says, you're still doing this. The charges you're gonna be watching over, over God's people, you are God's people. And so this is a service to God's people. That's what I'm doing. Uh, that word, uh, uh, mishmareth, to watch, that's what the charge means, that word, thou shalt do. Moses, the law, this is what it's saying. Moses, this is what you're going to do with them. That's what they're going to have. Give them this charge. This is the charge that they have. Their charge is going to be to watch. So now we start all that to give you to start chapter 9 of Numbers. Now we're prepared. Okay. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of Egypt. So remember, they haven't begun the journey yet. They're about to begin the 38 or 39 or 40 um, years walk in the wilderness. And they're, gonna, they're, in the, they're in the wilderness of Sinai. That's where they're at right now. And wilderness is not a good place. It's an un uninhabitable place. And I put a baby there because babies are like that. You can't give babies anything to do. They can't mow the grass. They can't even talk. So they're uninhabitable. When the Spirit of God comes into us, He wants to inhabit us for a service. Well, you can't do that with a baby. They're just going to... All they're interested in, in is eating and sleeping. They don't care about anybody else. It's a, good it's a good thing the Lord doesn't give them any teeth because if they did, they could hurt mom, you know, they could because they get angry, but they're helpless and it's a good thing. But here you have a people that have just come out and we're told in the first month of the second year, they just came out of Egypt, they're babies, you know? And I always say, if you've been born into the church, less, if, you're, if you're a Christian, less than two years, you're still a baby. You know, you, you're growing, and they're growing really fast. Uh, but it comes a time after that, and I believe that's how long the honeymoon is as well. And then it's time to go to work. And so here you say in the first month of the second year. So they spent one year there in Sinai getting the law, the Ten Commandments, and the tabernacle, and all the sacrifices. They've just gotten that. Okay, and now it's time. But notice, before you get into this journey, God is going to warn them, he says, after they were come out of Egypt. And you might start thinking after a while, I did this on my own. You know, I became a Christian because I read the Bible and I started understanding and I started going to church and then I became a Christian. Well, don't forget who brought you out. Because in Deuteronomy, he's going to warn us, this is the next book we're going to look at after, after we look at John. He's going to warn them several times, beware, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Don't forget him. Don't forget him. Because they did. The people of God forgot him. Look at this. This is in Ezekiel 34, 2. This is towards the end of the kingdom. This is what the... Ex uh, Ezekiel is saying, Son of man, the Lord is telling Ezekiel, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves, should not the shepherds feed the flocks. It happened. It happened to them, and they were kicked out for that reason. I mean, one of the reasons. They forgot, and so the whole nation got corrupted. So look what he says. To prohibit this forgetfulness, he's going to do this. And this is part of the Levite's charge. Remind them. Let the children of, of Israel also keep the Passover unto his appointed, at his appointed um, season. So here's a feast, he says, the Passover. It's very important to keep the Passover. Um, celebrate or acknowledge and that folks my Passover is coming up in November that's when I became a Christian and I never forget 
I can forget my real birthday because it's, nah, I never celebrated. I think my mom celebrated it once when I was older. She made a cake and I says, wow, what a neat thing. But then after that, it does, it's irrelevant. All I know is I'm getting old, you know. But my birthday, my, phys- my spiritual birthday, I never forget that. I always treat myself to a meal and to just think, you know, wow, it really happened. I'm going to heaven, you know. Uh, keep the Passover, observe it at his appointed season. And that season is an assembly, as convened for a purpose, you know. And he had three seasons, three, uh, throughout their calendar, God had gave him, given them seven feasts. Three were in one uh, month and three in another and one in the summer. He says, I want you to keep these as a reminder, they're, they're there for a purpose. It's a very important purpose. And, the, and look at the Passover. The Passover was when the offering or Pesach, a pre uh, termission, that's an exemption. An exemption is the process of freeing or state of being freed from an obligation or liability imposed on others. You don't have to go through it. Somebody is going to take it for you. And that is a celebration. as a feast. Jesus took it for us. So that could be a festival or the victim. Can you imagine? We're celebrating the festival of the victim. Because somebody took it over for you. And you, you don't forget that. This is, you're supposed to keep this. And so look what it says in verse 3. In the 14th day of this month at even... You shall keep it in this appointed season according to all the rites of it and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall you keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. Look at all that redundancy here. It's like God, nobody writes like this. I mean, if you write like this in an English class, they're going to give you an F because you're being redundant and you're using the same word. You just, they're they're going to tell you, you should change that word. Give it a synonym or something. The Lord doesn't do that. Because the Lord is the master English teacher. And he, he's doing it for another purpose. He says, he repeats it. Keep it. Keep it. You shall keep it. Look how he said. It's a, it's a command. And it's also, it's an obligation. He says, you, you need to do this. Uh, all the rights of it. And so I thought I'd digress a little bit and go into that and look at the rights of it. Why? Because a lot of things that the Lord tells us to do, we don't understand, fully understand, and we think they're an option. A lot of the things that the Lord tells us, don't do that. We think that it's an option, and then we get into trouble and come back years later saying, Lord, please get me out of this trouble. Duh. Okay. Now look at this. And the Lord also gives us ordinances uh, as to the church now, Luke twenty two nineteen says, And he took bread and he gave thanks, and brake it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. We do this as well. The pastor celebrates it four times uh, a year at least. Um, so the question is, do I keep the Lord's Supper? A lot of people just look at it as an option. And, not, you know, it's really an obligation. We should keep it. It will remind you that he gave his life for you. And so the blood, when we drink the the juice, it's a reminder that we're drinking. We're taking the cup of of life. We're drinking his life. So we should be living. It's like he gives his life for me, and I in turn give my life for him. That's That's the new covenant. That's New Testament. And so we should do it often. Some people celebrate it once a week. Some people celebrate it once a month. We celebrate it quarterly, but it's good. It's a reminder. So, and they shall keep the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. Look at how many times he repeats it. Keep it, keep it. So I thought we're going to digress a little bit so we can look at the details, how you need to keep it on that day. Look at this. Uh, on the 14th day, that means if you have seven days, on the seventh day is a Sabbath. 
Okay? So if you repeat that, the 14th would be the second Sabbath. Okay? So it's the second Sabbath. Uh, on the 14th day, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, this is the law. This is the law of the Passover. And it's, it's uh, so did the children of Israel. They kept it because they were into the law. They kept the law and they don't, didn't get the significance. Why did they not get the significance? Because we're going we're gonna to see that. Why the Lord um, at even. So the evening would be right there. The evening of the 14th. That's when the Sabbath starts. And that's the charge of the Levites. The Levites, that's their business, folks. And we're going to see when we get into the history books, what they did to the Levites. They got rid of the Levites. In the northern, in the northern part of Israel, they got rid of them. Duh, it's like getting rid of the Bible. Or that's like having a Bible and it's covered with dust. You don't read it. So you don't read it, you don't get the information. And they got rid of the Levites. But this was the charge that the Levites had. Now look at this. This is, this is, now we're looking at Leviticus 23, 5. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So notice on the 14th day you would, on the, in the evening you're supposed to put blood on the door post. That means that that night the angel of death comes to your house and he sees the blood on your doors and it goes over. You're, it's passed over. You're passed over because the blood of a victim is already on there. Somebody already died. And that's why the Lord is always wants his blood upon our lives. He wants to see the blood. That's why the horns were always important on the, on the sacrifice, altar sacrifice. He wants to see the blood. So when he, and when he sees us at the mercy seat, he always wants to see the blood. If he doesn't see the blood in your life, that means you're not covered. And so you, that's not good. So notice this. In the evening, that means this is how the, it, that's the, day, the way the day starts. It starts with the evening. The first watch, second watch, third watch, fourth watch, and then begins the morning. But you've already spent 12 days of the day already in the evening. That's the way the Jewish hour or the Jewish day is composed. It starts with the evening, not like us. We started at 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, we're still asleep. And then this is the, you got the first hour, second hour, and the third hour. And then you have the sixth hour, the ninth hour. And then it goes back. The sun settles. And that's the day. That's the way their day is composed. So then begins the 15th, okay? So you just spent the 14th. The 15th, look what happens on the 15th. On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So at that point, you start eating unleavened bread. That's for seven days. So... And in the seventh day, in the first day, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So the 15th would fall on a Monday, and that becomes a Sabbath. No servile work therein. It's a Sabbath. You can't work on that day. So that's fine. So the Lord is telling them that. Keep it. Notice how he said, keep it on the, fifth, on the 14th. And, uh, but you shall offer an offering made of fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is that holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. So you shall keep it for seven days. Okay? The burnt offering. And that would probably be flour. Which is a symbol of us. Seven days you're burning that sacrifice unto the Lord. The flour. And notice that's, all, that's all after the 14th. That, that's after somebody's already taken your place. And that's what happens to us, folks. You can't offer your service to God until the Lord already paid for you. Once the Lord paid for you, then you're a Christian. I mean, there's people that are working for the Lord and they're not Christians. It's like going to work and not getting paid. You're not going to get paid for that. 
You can only get paid once the office says, yeah, we're going to hire you. Go ahead and go to work. And uh, we got your name down. And here's your time card. But if, unless you're on the clock, you can be working just like anybody else and good, doing good work, but it's not counting. So that flower that you're burning is a living sacrifice. This is why you're, you're offering. And you, can, you can only offer it after the 14th. That's when the 15th starts. And a week, seven days is an indefinite time. Seventh is like a perfect number. It's like your life. You know, that's, what I, that's the way I understand. And the seventh day is a holy convocation, a public meeting. And you shall do no servile work therein. So that becomes a Sabbath as well. But folks, that's already a Sabbath. So it's a double whammy. Now you got two Sabbaths, Sabbath, Sabbath, there. And see, the only reason I pick up on these things is because I do graphics. And so this, the Lord is really big on these things. Uh, look what it says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you, come, when you be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. I'm showing you all this to tell you how complicated this thing is. When they were told to keep the Sabbath, I mean the, the Passover, there were so many things that only they could understand, and the Levites were going to explain these things to them. Okay? When you come into the land, well, they couldn't sow and reap right now. They're in the desert. This is going to have to wait when you come into the land. Later on, when you come into the land, then, then you can celebrate the sheaves, the first fruits. They were only going to be able to celebrate the Passover and the unleavened while they're traveling in the desert. This is going to have to wait. Then you shall bring the, a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. The first fruits, once you harvest, once you're in the land, you're harvesting, then you can bring your fruit. And, uh, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. And the way was to, sh Lord, this is yours. You bring your first fruits of the harvest and you offer them un unto the Lord. And that becomes the Lord's. And it'll be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath. There it is. After the Sabbath, and the priest shall wave it for you. The Lord says it'll be accepted. And it's always good. I mean, you want the Lord to bless your work. Whatever you're working, if you're planting tomatoes or corn or whatever, you bring the first corns and the first tomatoes to the Lord. And then the rest of the crop is going to be great. It's like the same principle is found in tithing. If you tithe, you think that you lo you'll live better on 100% of your uh, paycheck, when, it, when in, in actuality you'll live better in 90%, because you, live, you give the Lord the first tenth. And uh, a lot of people don't believe that, but I can tell you it's a true story. So the first fruits belong to the Lord, and he, because he wants us to keep him in mind. Don't forget. Now, now, here's where the problem starts, because we don't see this coming, the calendar. Folks, the calendar changes. See, last month, July, the 14th fell on Thursday. This month, the 14th fell on Sunday. That's why the Lord said 14th. He didn't say second Sabbath of the month. He, because he had other things. I mean, I meet with the old Navy guys on the second Monday of the month. I always, I always do. I'm their chaplain. But we don't have a, we just call it the second Monday of the month. The Lord doesn't do that. Uh, so here you have, this is what happens. When you change it to the 14th, look at what happens. You get three Sabbaths in a row. The 14th at the Sabbath, because he said so. So is the 15th, because that's the first day of unleavened bread. And then the 16th is a regular Sabbath. So you wind up with three Sabbaths in a row. And that's what we looked at that. That's when the Lord resurrected after the 16th. And then you wind up with the 22nd. That 14th day has got to be the 14th, no matter how the calendar changes. That's the way it is. And then you have seven days of unleavened. 
to the 22nd. And after the 22nd, that the 23rd becomes the first Sabbath of sevens, seven of seven. And that's gonna give you 49 week or 49 days, plus one gives you 50, which is Pentecost. And that is the birth of the church. That's, all that was hidden in there. And God told them, don't forget to keep it on this specific day because it's a picture. And if they hadn't done this, people like me that come later on and look at these details, I wouldn't get it. So the Lord made preparations for me and everybody else that te goes into these details, detail. And so they were supposed to keep it exactly like that. The Lord always has a reason. Just like I said, the ordinances of the church even now do the same thing for us. The Lord's Supper, baptism and all those, those are not optional. We're supposed to keep those. Uh, the Lord tell, uh, when I first got baptized, the pastor, walked, I walked into church and I had only been a Christian for like six months. And he says, have you been baptized? I says, no, sir. Bring a towel tonight. That's all he said. Oh, and stop by the office. I says, okay. So I stopped by the office and he says, do you know what it means? I says, yes, sir. He said, why haven't you done it? I says, I haven't gotten around, I haven't gotten around to it. He says, well, well, you're doing it tonight. He just did it like that. I said, wow. And it was fantastic because that night we had a, a group of uh, singers from Israel in the church. And when they, I got presented to the church, me and a couple of other people uh, got presented to the church. We got baptized. So we were lined up in front of the church and I had a Jewish guy, me, and a Jewish guy, and then somebody else, and a Jewish, some Jewish girls. And I thought, this is so fantastic, welcoming, being welcomed into the church with the Jewish people. <sighs> you know, it was, anyway, I digress. Um, so the, the, the 50th also is a jubilee, is being set free, you know. But look at this, the Lord Jesus was, he died at three o'clock in the afternoon, the ninth hour. But he didn't die on the 14th. He died on the 13th. Because remember, the blood already had to be on the doorpost by the evening of the 14th. That's the Passover. That means he, dies, he died on the 13th. He died in the evening at 3 o'clock. And remember, they had to bury him by before the, uh, the sun went down. He had to be buried before the start of the, of the Sabbath, which was the following day, was the Thursday. So it's explained there. And that's why a lot of people still celebrate. They have a problem with, uh, they, they, they have the Lord crucified on Friday, then they have the Lord resurrected on Sunday. And, and, and that's crazy. That's crazy talk, okay? James says this in 118, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So see, the church is the first, as first fruits. That's the chief. Now watch this, folks. This is going to be so fantastic here. And you shall offer that day when you wave the chief as a he, as when you wave the chief and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord, and the meat offering thereof shall be a two tenth deals of fine flour mingled. So. On that day you offer the sheaf, you offer this as well. That day, a lamb without blemish, and you offer the meat offering, which is the flour mingled with oil, with, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor, and then this, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of an hen. This is fantastic. Look how it ends. It ends in joy. This whole thing, these three celebrations you were to do, it ends in joy. You offer the lamb, which is Jesus. You offer yourself, which is the flower, in the spirit, that's the oil. And it ends in joy. Notice that, remember that. That's very important. That's how this whole thing, is, you're gonna go through life the Lord says it's going to all end. And this is what, it's so good for us because it, it keeps reminding us what you do for the Lord here. Saturday is coming. The real, the, the real day of rest is coming up. It's in the future. When you work, when you're a field worker 
you were always it was oh you're always happy when it was thirsty you know because saturday is coming you're gonna get paid on friday oh yeah and then you can go to the movies or whatever you do on saturday the joy is joy is coming okay so now we let's get back into the story and there were certain men oh good grief look at what happens here and there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. Isn't that crazy? The Lord just told them, you got to keep it. Oh, but there's, Lord, we can't do it. Why is that? There were certain men, it says. And you look at that word, man, you know, when you do this, I said, okay, what does that mean? Look at that word, man is Adam. Adam. Roddy, a human being, an individual, or, a, or, a, or a, the species, mankind, etc. Well, that's not the words that's being used here. That's not the word. The word that's being used is enosh. A moral, or the, the British will use the word thank you. The, a chap, chap. And that's like a dude. You know, it's a what caught me is that the definition what caught me there is uh, Adam is a more dignified word than Enosh and I'll, I'll put on there goofy or awkward we, we, we say oh here comes a couple of goofballs you know because that's how we look at some people you know dudes you know these clowns they're just all up to mischievous things well the Bible tells us here there was a couple of men there a couple of as it were goofballs and look what they come up. This is the thing. These guys come up and say, who were defiled by a dead body? They were defiled by a dead body. So that's true. Because at first I wanted to say, maybe they were, they were just trying to get out of the obligation. But these guys were, it says they were defiled. But the thing is, they're mixing things here. Because remember that thing was about the, we just studied that, the Nazarite. The Nazarite was considered unclean if he touched the dead thing. But these are not, this is not concerning Nazarites. This is concerning keeping a festival. So it's, a, they're mixing things here. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. See, a lot of things that the Lord's telling you, look what these guys, I think these are religious people. You know, oh, we can't do that. Why not? Because we're unclean. We're, we're, you know, we, we, that's so high for us. We are not clean. Oh, good grief. And that's what happened to the Jewish people. They started adding things to the law of God. Okay? And those men said unto him, we are defiled. That word are is italicized. So we defiled by the dead body of a man. So they're being, they're, they're mixing the Nazarite vow. And so they came to Moses on that day. Notice how it's being stressed that day. And it's funny to me because they came before Moses and Aaron. And I thought, you know, if you're unclean, wouldn't you send somebody else to talk to Aaron instead of you appearing before Aaron? Aaron is the high priest. And so they weren't afraid to appear before Aaron. But so that tells me there's something funny going on here. And so they come, look what it says. Wherefore we are kept, wherefore are we kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel? So well, why can't we? We can't. We can't do it. And so we cannot offer the offering. And so, and at the appointed season, we can't do it. We can't come to the assembly. And a lot of people find, have an excuse why they don't not assemble with the people of God. And this is what the Lord has been telling us here. These things that, that he tells us in the New Testament, forsake not the assembling of yourselves, there's a reason for it. And we might not understand all the ramifications, but there's reasons for these things. And folks, I believe it's true. I've seen people little by little stop missing services, and before you know it, years. Because we don't understand the things that are going on among the children of Israel. And this is what they did. Because he has already told us, I remind you, he already told us three times in a year, I want you to meet. This was the law. You shall appear before the Lord. The Lord, if you were 20 years and above, you had to be at Jerusalem those three times. 
You had to. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord has will command concerning you. So the law says, Ah, we haven't dealt with that. This is the first. We haven't dealt with that before. Let me see what the Lord says concerning this thing. How come you can't meet because you're unclean? Okay? And that's when the law, I, mean, I believe this is, a, the Lord is showing us, they're, they're trying to add to the law, to the Lord's commandments. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. See, the children of Israel, not to that just two guys, he's talking to the whole nation. Saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or be in a journey far off, no matter what off, no matter, he, yet, yet he shall keep the Passover. The Lord says, You shall keep it. You need to keep it. See, he's, he doesn't cut him off. He says, you need to be there. But look what he adds. This is interesting. The 14th day of the second month, not the first month, at even they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Oh, that's good. We, got able, we were able to reach it because we just about to end here. Uh, not the end, but we're going to have to stop. Look at this. Second is, to me, it's, like, it's not the first. Second is like subordinate or inferior in position. It's not the best. Second, if you're second, if, you, if you're in a race and you come in second, well, you get no cigar. You know, you did good, but you missed out on the prize. You don't get the kiss. You know, first is the best. And the Lord says, okay. And I think this is what happened to the Jewish people. Because look what it, it says here. You shall have, you eat the unleavened bread and the bitter herbs. You don't get the sweet wine. You know, it's not going to be a sweet thing. To, it won't end in sweetness for you because you won't see the picture. You, you will mess up the calendar and you will miss the picture of the church, which is, that's the, the fruit that they were bringing. That's the fruit of the Israel. Israel produced the church, which is all Jewish. The 12 apostles were Jewish. We, we started off Jewish. Now we're primarily Gentile. But see, and we're going to close it here. It's a good place to cut off. But because they didn't do this, folks, let's go out. Let me show you something else. They shall leave none of it until morning, nor break any bones of it according to the ordinance of the Passover. They shall keep it. You need to keep it, he told them. Otherwise, you won't see the church. And that's why the church became a mystery, I believe, to the Israel. The church is a mystery. And Paul tells us they didn't see the church. Look what it says here. In 2 Chronicles 35, 18 says, And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept and all the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They didn't keep it, folks. They didn't keep the Passover from, from, sec, from Samuel, from the days of Samuel to Josiah. That's the end of the kingdom. That's about 500 years. Can you imagine? We already know they didn't keep the, the Jubilee. And here's another thing they didn't keep. One time in the kings of Hezekiah, they kept the Passover on the second day of the month because the priests were unclean. But this tells you, if you, if you we're going to have to stop here. But if you don't keep the ordinances of God, you're going to miss the picture that he wants to show you. There's pictures in everything he says. It's amazing. I'm amazed. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for your awesome word, Lord, that teaches us we ought to keep your word, Lord. Help us to keep your word. And now we ask you to, Lord, open our eyes and our ears and our minds and our hearts to prepare them, uh, to prepare our hearts for your word, that we would know what you're saying to us in the message. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, and we love you. Through your son's name, Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. Good, good. And you have about 12 minutes. Ta-da!